About two weeks before September the 11th, there was an international conference on racism and racial discrimination in South Africa, in Durban. The whole world come, came together, combined, to pass a resolution censuring Israel in that world conference in Durban. Israel walked out of that conference. Guess who walked out with Israel? Colin Powell, the Jamaican. Yeah, who is supposed to be representing the black people of the United States of America. The black people of the United States of America invested heavily in that conference. For years they worked for it. And yet the United States of America walked out of the conference in solidarity with Israel. Can you explain? Do you have any means of political analysis, any tools of political analysis which can explain this mysterious relationship between the United States and the state of Israel? No, you cannot. No one can do it. None can explain except a man named Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is the explanation? Dajjal has completed a day which is like a year and he's now in a day which is like a month. Phase two of his mission. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I now come to the most important moment in this talk. I want to share with you my political and spiritual vibration here. And that is that I have come to the conclusion. You know, Lloyd Vest taught me a, a local expression. He said, when God wants to kill Bachaki, give him wing to fly. And uh, there is a similar statement like that in the Quran that Allah gives them staircases of silver and roofs of silver. They fly high until he brings them down. The United States is flying high now because it's about to crash. <coughs> yes. We are located at that moment in time when a day which is like a month is about to end and the day which is like a week is about to commence. When it does occur, it will confirm what I'm saying. When Britain became the ruling state in the world, <coughs> Britain took control of the money of the world. And the sterling pound was the international currency. Do you remember those days when we were studying? 1 pound 480, 2 pound 960, 3 pound 1440, when you went to school? Huh? Yeah. And then when the United States took over from Britain as the ruling state in the world, the United States could not be the ruling state in the world without taking control of the money of the world. And so the US dollar replaced the sterling pound as the international currency. This took place at the Bretton Woods Conference, the Bretton Woods Accord in upstate New York. And I'm saying to you, if you look at the world of money, you would see the writing is on the wall. The, the Bretton Woods Accord is collapsing. It has already collapsed. And a new international monetary system is around the corner in which the US dollar will disappear. And when the US dollar crashes, the American economy will crash with it. Flying high, the Dow Jones flying high. 
I want to suggest to you that the September 11 attack on America bears an uncanny similarity to the attack, the terrorist attack of September, of, 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 the, of the summer of 1914. And that the events which are now unfolding in the world, the attack on Afghanistan, the attack on Iraq, <coughs> the new American imperium that is taking over the world, are all meant to serve one mission, to pave the way for the state of Israel to wage a big war. And as a consequence of that big war that Israel is going to wage, the territory of the state of Israel is going to dramatically expand to encompass the biblical frontiers of Israel, of the Holy Land. Bible says, from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. That's not true. The Quran proves that that is false. The Holy Land does not exist from the river of Egypt to the river Euph Euphrates, that is false. But it's there in the Bible. They put it in. And so Israel has to wage a big war which will dramatically expand the territory of the state so that Israel will, swear, will, will, will control the Suez Canal tomorrow. And Israel will control the oil of the Gulf tomorrow. And there would be a concomitant attack on the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar collapses. And when it collapses, it will bring down the whole world of paper money with it. This is our lecture on Islam and the international monetary system. When Israel wages that big war, I expect that Israel will unleash weapons of warfare we've never seen before. And at the end of it, Israel will take over from the United States as the new ruling state in the world. But Israel cannot wage that war while still there are any significant obstacles in the way. And now put on your thinking caps. Which is the most significant obstacle which still stands in the way of Israel waging her big war? Is it a man named Osama bin Laden and his men hiding in caves in Afghanistan? Is it that blue-eyed stooge of the Yankee, a man named Saddam Hussein? Are they significant obstacles in the path of Israel? Is it Taliban in Afghanistan? Wake up! None of these are significant obstacles in the part of Israel. Israel has one major obstacle in its way that must be removed before Israel can wage that big war. And it is Pakistan's nuclear weapons capacity. And coupled with that is Iran's missile capacity. And so all the hullabaloo we're going through now, all the maneuverings on the chessboard of the world, are all intended to culminate with the destruction of Pakistan's nuclear capacity. That is around the corner. That's about to take place. Parvez Musharraf, of course, is playing a very significant role in it. I expect that Israel will be able to wage a big war probably within the next five to ten years. But Allah knows best. When Israel wages that big war and re replaces the United States as a ruling state in the world, the first ruling state was Britain. The second ruling state was the United States. The third and the last would be this imposter state of Israel. I am suggesting to you that Dajjal or the Antichrist would now have completed stage two, a day which is like a